First, a story that's been getting a lot of traction since the release of an investigation Friday into a high-powered Republican insider. Kent Sturman took his own life in December while he was the subject of a criminal probe. Our guest, Nate Monroe, broke that story. The Florida Times Union columnist joins us now, and you can join the conversation, too, at 904-528, excuse me, 549-2937. Uh, you could also tweet us at FCC on air and email us at First Coast Connect at WJCT.org. Good morning, Nate. How's it going? It's going great, Anne. I, I hope it's going great for you, too. It is. We're still kind of getting our sea legs here, but uh, happy morning. <laughs> happy Monday. Um, yeah. So, Nate, this report has been in the works for months, and it finally came out Friday, much awaited. Tell us a little bit about who Kent Sturman was and how this investigation began in the first place. Sure. I mean, you know, Ken Sturman was kind of an insider's insider. This is not someone who was a household name in Jacksonville by any means. Um, it, it, he was someone who had ingratiated himself to powerful people, both in the city and in the state. Um, I, I would say what was interesting about Kent Sturman is, is that the way he did that was not the typical way uh, that a lot of kind of insiders become close to powerful people. He he was a, a political donor, um, but not by any means the the wealthiest donor um, or the the most prolific. He didn't give these huge sums of money that we sometimes hear about, um, and yet he found himself. I mean, he, he could have credibly claimed to have been among the closest, if not the closest, kind of advisor that the governor had in in Northeast Florida. Hmm. Um, and, and so he, he had just sort of established these sort of deep relationships with people like the governor. He was also very close with the former sheriff of Jacksonville, Mike Williams. Um, he sort of did that despite not being, you know, just this, you know, again, like the the, the kind of real money man behind a lot of these guys. Mm-hmm. But but definitely a, a kind of a deep insider. Um, so this investigation began shortly before he took his own life in December of last year. And then the investigation continued after his suicide. Why didn't it end when, when he took his life? So the state attorney's office continued investigating Kent Sturman for about 10 months. Um, and the state attorney said that they, they continued to do so uh, to, to try and figure out if if he had victimized any additional women, uh, the underlying charges in the in the investigative report uh, describe a situation where Kent Sturman had kind of sought to coerce a young woman by luring her in with uh, potential VIP access to a Taylor Swift concert. Um, that was that was the only incident that investigators found. Um, they did not find any other women, despite there being sort of rumors of this um, in the kind of immediate aftermath of his death last year. Mm-hmm. And so the state attorney released this information on Friday and chose to make a lot of information available, really all of the supporting documents, um, all of the interviews, including with the victim and her father. Uh, why do you think she chose to handle it this way? Why do you think she chose to release proactively so much of the investigative material? Yeah, I mean, I think they they do this from time to time when they are handling a a sensitive investigation uh, in which there has been a lot of kind of public interest. And I think that this one certainly qualified. Um, I I also think that they, you know, I don't want to speak for them, but I, I think the proactive release of information may have also had the effect, intended or not, of, I think, maybe pushing back against, there was just a lot of speculation sort of out in the ether after Kent Sturman's death, Um, just given the nature of who he was, the fact that he, you know, he did have friends in high places. I think there were people who, who maybe, suspected that that this investigation would not be thorough or that there would be some effort to cover things up. And and so I think the the state attorney proactively releasing all of this information, and and it really was a pretty exhaustive amount of information, frankly, uh, I 
I think it had the effect of sort of pushing back on that that kind of speculation, and, and I think, you know, pretty effectively. Um, this was a very thorough investigation mm-hmm. of, of uh, Kent's activities. And I think it's important to clarify, because after you did some of your initial reporting, I think there was wild rumors that this offense that he was accused of somehow involved children. It did not. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so the the young woman at the center of this this kind of troubling story about Taylor Swift tickets, um, she was, in fact, significantly younger than Kent Thurman, who was 50, um, but she was not a minor. Um, the, the investigators have not released uh, her exact age at the time that these alleged crimes were committed, but we do know that she was not a minor. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was, she was not under 18. And that has obvious implications, both in a legal context and also just in the, you know, the way that we as people probably view the story. Um, and it had been that there were some reports that she was a minor at the time. And so there was some confusion, in, especially in those earlier days, about the, you know, the, the age of, of this young woman. Mm-hmm. But we, we do know that now. She is not a minor. Or she was not a minor. And the conclusion of the investigation was that had he lived, he would have been charged with several criminal charges. Is that right? Yeah. He, uh, the prosecutors outlined um, about four or five different charges they were considering. Most of them were, were kind of misdemeanor solicitation for prostitution. There were a couple of different sort of forms of, of fraud. The most serious charge um, was uh, a kind of unlawful imprisonment charge, which would have been a third degree felony and could have carried some some jail time and a pretty hefty fine. Um, and and yeah, so I mean, he would. This was a very serious. This is a very serious issue, and, and the state attorney's office, I think, certainly sought to to communicate to everyone in their disposition report that they they viewed it as such. And that given that he had such close ties to elected officials, including the governor, Governor Ron DeSantis, the former sheriff, Mike Williams, and also our former mayor, Lenny Curry, does any of this impact them? I mean, I, that's probably something that's maybe a little bit above my, my pay grade um, <laughs> for the moment anyway. I, I don't know. Um, I, I will say there has also been a lot of kind of speculation, and, and frankly, this is just kind of a matter of some subjectivity about how close was Kent to some of these people. And and I think no more pointedly than how close was he to the governor. Um, there is no doubt that he was a, a a bit of a confidant to Ron DeSantis. I, I myself know that, um, and, and other reporters, you know, were in positions to to be able to confirm that too. I think there was always this question with Kent Sturman, though, about whether he sometimes oversold Mm -hmm. the kind of access and influence that he had to some of these powerful people. Um, And and I've never really been able to answer that question to my satisfaction. I, Mm. you know, again, as as some other reporters out there, I've, I've had some opportunities to talk to Kent over the years. And I certainly got the impression that he was very, he could be kind of braggadocious about his connections mm. and, and sometimes even about his wealth. And um, I, I, I think there was, I, I certainly got the impression from time to time that, that he you know, might have been the sort of person who was happy to, to really play up his, his connections. Mm. But, you know, that's, that's a, that's a sort of a different question for a different day in some ways. He absolutely did have, a relationship with the governor um, and, and with some of those other elected officials. And, you know, to the extent voters decide to hold those connections against them, I, you know, I guess we'll just have to see. Mm-hmm. Well, Nate, we, of course, appreciate uh, and love your reporting. Um, thanks a lot for joining us this morning to kind of give us the lowdown on this investigation.